Hello, everyone. Let's start with a question. Why do you think the largest companies in the world are all tech companies? Except for one state-owned oil company, all of the top 10 largest companies in the world are tech companies. Yet, they don't have the biggest revenues or the biggest number of employees. Most of their founders are college dropouts, and most of their assets are actually virtual. So why are they valued so much? The short answer is because they are growing at an incredible speed. So why are they growing so fast? What makes them fast? Let me give you an example. If my mom decides to open an online shop for her pastries today, she can. She can have a beautiful website up and ready with all of her products, all of their images, and connect it to, their, to her bank account directly, all in less than one hour. She doesn't even need a computer to do this. She can do all of this on her phone. That's what's unimaginable only a few years ago. The internet itself is just 30 years old. Now, we, can, we cannot imagine a single day of our lives without it. Did you know what an email inbox looked like back then? Like this. In only three decades, we went from this ugly thing to real art piece made by artificial intelligence and praised by real art artists. This is a real art piece made by a machine. How is that possible? Why IT industry cha is changing so fast when other industry barely changed in a decade or so? And I'm not talking about old businesses. And I'm, ta I'm talking about most well-funded, innovative industries like healthcare, biotechnology, nanotechnology. A shining example of this inefficiency is this. Even today, after two years of a global pandemic that almost bankrupted all the world, we are still getting a 20% error rate in our COVID tests because we are using tests that are 40 years old. This shows how slow even the healthcare industry is. Change in every other industry is just too slow compared to the IT industry. Could you compare the online services that we all use today to what we had only 10 years ago? Could we say the same amount of progress has happened into any other product? As it turns out, there are only three patterns that every successful tech company does that is completely different from every other business. Let's look into them. The first pattern. A few years ago, I was teaching a course at the university. And one of the professors there once told me, most of my students fail my class every year. I thought to myself, that's a very weird thing to be proud of. It's as a doctor says, most of my patients die. You see, right there is arguably the biggest problem that we have in the world. Our education system doesn't seem to have the right goals by design. The IT industry doesn't depend on higher education or universities, which shows how inefficient higher education can become today. You cannot find a, a single Fortune 500 tech company who hires engineers based on their degrees, their certificates, or universities. Most of the time, they won't even ask you for it. The IT industry thrived by basing education on learn by doing. This can disrupt the education system in all other industries. As Aristotle said, for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. When someone wants to learn how to code, they don't need to go to a university or even a class. There are thousands of online services 
most of them free, that you can start coding immediately. The best part is that you don't need to do anything else. From the first day, you are starting building real projects. You are starting to build your own website, for example. And in the process of building your own website, you are learning more and more every day. That's how education was for thousands of years. Some might say this solution is only applicable for software development. But is that really the case? My mother didn't go to any class. She learned how to open her online shop with only a couple of online tutorials on YouTube. Then she learned the basics of e-commerce, how to market her products, what photos will sell better, and everything else, little by little, every day, which made her shop bigger and bigger every day. Or let's take marketing, for example. Would you hire someone with lots of degrees in marketing, with lots of certificates, but zero real life experience? Or would you rather hire someone with no degrees, no certificates, but five years experience in a high performing team? Education in every industry should start by doing. What we learn is always greater than what we know. The second pattern. Have you ever thought of why we should work eight hours a day? Why not seven? Why not nine? And worse than that, why are we measuring work by hours? That's ridiculous. The IT industry doesn't measure work by hours or spending time in an office or something. They measure work only by results, by the impact. Multi-billion dollar companies were made by a handful of employees with far fewer lines of codes in less time than their competitors. Let's take a good look at Instagram or Telegram, for example. They were each less than 50 employees when they hit a $1 billion mark. They didn't have the biggest team, biggest marketing budget, or anything else. But they had a great product Users loved them, and a community was built around them. That's the, the only thing that matters. Another pattern is this. We love their startup mindset, not the corporate mindset. Everything is up to be challenged. IT industry doesn't believe in the status quo. We believe that everything is, should be challenged. Everything from the surface of our business to the core of our business is open to be challenged. If you don't challenge your own business, someone else will. We are always in favor of thinking outside the box, thinking, thinking differently. For example, Google encourages all of its employees to spend 20% of their time not working on the company's projects, but work on their own ideas, whatever, whatever it is. If that idea shows any promise, they will invest in it and make it successful. That's how we have Gmail today. That's how we have AdSense today, two of Google's biggest businesses. I know, it's very uncomfortable to challenge the status quo, but it's the necessary step to evolve to the next stage. Corporations that forget this become very eager to preserve their position, preserve their ways. But sooner or later, someone will challenge everything that you said is too big to change, and they will change it and take your place in the market. Nokia was a 150 years old company. They changed the landscape of telecom. They were king of cell phones for decades. The moment they stopped innovating, they were finished. The third pattern is the most important of all, and it's a result of all of the things that we talked about. Developers don't believe in reinventing the wheel. We should use what we have to build what can be better than faster. The idea of open source, contributing to each other's work, creating crowdsourced products is this. 
That's how we enjoy software that was made by thousands of developers at the same time. They never met each other, never worked with each other, didn't speak the same language, but they created something together. That's a level of collaboration that we don't see anywhere else. The browser that you all use every day is most likely being built on top of an open source project called Chromium, which itself is a child of another open source project called WebKit. 40% of all the websites that you see every day are built by another open source project called WordPress. Most of all programming languages are open source as well. And the idea of open source and creating crowdsourcing products are not only about software development. It's bigger than that. The biggest encyclopedia in the world is Wikipedia, which all of its content is crowdsourced by millions and millions of people from all around the world. No funding, nothing at all. You cannot even mention another encyclopedia. Crowdsourcing believe in something greater than the business itself. I made it this far, now take it and move it further. Instead of competing, we can add value to each other's work. Imagine if pharmaceutical companies or healthcare companies were open source. It would have taken them weeks to develop new tests and new drugs instead of years at a fraction of the cost to the public. Let's see a real example. It will take, typically, $2.6 billion, with a B, to develop a new drug. But recently, new kinds of companies are developing open source drugs for less than $50,000. That's a saving of 99.9999 and go on of all the costs. Today, it's not about building the next top business or the next top selling product. Today, top and most successful businesses are the ones who can create the best platform for others to grow. Your business is not a business anymore. It's a platform for others to gener generate value with your help. That's a business that cannot fail. Walmart is a business, but Amazon and Shopify are platform of growth for their merchants. That's why they are winning. You see, my mother didn't need to be a developer or a tech savvy person to enjoy the benefits of the world of IT. These patterns turned IT to a platform of success for every other industry and individual. The best thing is that these patterns are not specific to the IT world. They can be applied in any other business as well. Right now, the software industry is borrowing the best part of other industries to create the fast-growing platforms in each and one of them. Now is the time to take a page from this playbook and create the next generation of industries and the next generation of businesses. The first step is to embrace the software developers in ourselves. To ask ourselves, where do I see any problem? Where do I see any waste? Where do I see any inefficiency? How can I solve it? Who should I collaborate with so our vision can become true? And we should learn that solution by doing it. Thank you. <laughs>